So, how many of you here are interested with IoT? How many of you know what IoT is? Very good, you came for the correct talk. So, my name is uh, Arvind. Uh, I am a co-founder of a product called as uh, the IoT Suitcase. I'll tell you more about that. Uh, I'm also author of a book called as Learning Ionic. I write a blog called as the Jackal of JavaScript, and that's my Twitter handle in case anybody wants to follow me. I like to have more followers. So apart from that, I also do a lot of things here. So you guys don't know what, how many of you raised your hands when I said, you know, enough things? So Internet of Things is basically connecting your electronic, electrical, and mechanical devices to the internet, and then each of these devices will start talking to each other. So this is called as Internet of Things, right? So anything which you have on the face of the earth, your table, your chair, your TV, this mic, will get connected to the internet and they can talk to each other over the internet. So this concept is called as Internet of Things. To make it even simple, right, it's like when your washing machine or your oven calls you up and tells you that, yo dude, I'm done. Okay, so this is Internet of Things. So this is what we, we want to do and we want to evolve towards. Okay, quick guess, how old do you think Internet of Things is? Ah, it's okay, they can shout it out. They're all kids, you should be shouting loudly. 20 years, okay. Any other answer? 50 years, that's very ambitious, okay. 10 years, 5 years? That's... <laughs> Okay, 100 years, I, I'll take that answer. So, uh, Internet of Things is, sorry? So, Internet of Things is basically 30 years old, right? It's not something new which has been coming from long back. So, you know the first IoT device? It, this has actually happened in the Carnegie Mellon University in 1982, right? So, what they have done is that they have taken a Coke machine and they have connected it to the internet to check how many uh, Cokes are still left in the machine. I, I don't know if this is that Coke machine or not. When I Googled it, I got an image and I put it here. So I don't know that. Do remember that the first web page was created in 1991. But even before the first web page was created by Tim Berners-Lee with the TCP and HTTP and so on, we had the first IoT device made. So it is quite old. The second device which they did was during 1989 by a guy called as John Romke. So this guy used the TCP IP protocol with uh, SNMP and MIB communication to turn a toaster on or off, right? So things like this have already happened way, way, way back. That's, I don't know how many of you here are born during that time. So is that old? So that, the next one is another very interesting use case which, which purely for people like us. So there's a coffee pot, and then people used to drink coffee at the, uh, what do you call, Cambridge University, okay? There was a Trojan room where people used to sit and work, and there used to be a coffee pot. Now, every time people start drinking it, the pot gets empty, and then somebody has to go and fill it up. Somebody has to call the pantry, and the pantry people will come and fill it up. Instead, what the smart people did is that, smart or lazy, people did is that, they actually took pictures of the coffee pot, you know, they upload it to a server, you know, three times a minute, and then the guy who's sitting in a pantry keeps monitoring the coffee pot. After some time, he knows that it's about to finish, and people used to come and then fill the coffee pot automatically. So these are some of the real-world use cases which actually are working. As we all know, what is the mother of invention? Laziness. Necessity. <laughs> L laziness is something which I am doing. So what we are trying to do with all this technology, right? So we are trying to become more lazy, or as people call it, smart, right? So there's a very thin line between laziness and smartness. I hope you guys know that. So what we are trying to do is that we are trying to make laziness as the mother of invention now. So all the things which you guys know, what, all the smart things which you guys are hearing about, it's practically making you lazy. How many of you, would like to have this. When somebody rings the doorbell, do you need to go to the doorbell, you know, go to the door, check out who is outside, open the door and see, and you don't like him, you send him off. Or you would want to open an app, see who's outside, and tell that, get lost. <laughs> yeah, I know everybody does that. So this is what we are talking about. Some call it laziness, some call it being smart, right? So being productive. I don't know what you're going to do being productive, maybe play the Pokemon Go game, but still, anyway. So 
What are the possible use cases of IoT? I showed you some of the interesting versions what happened before we even thought IoT existed. So uh, primarily, a big time change which is going to happen in the IoT world, according to me at least, is in the healthcare industry. Inside the healthcare industry, you can actually do quite a lot of things. One is like monitoring people who are patients, enabling the disabled with the technology, okay? Providing other healthcare services to people. Imagine a situation, imagine a situation where a pacemaker is fit into the heart and which is connected to the internet. Now, this guy does not even need to go to the hospital to check what is happening. Doctors keep getting his vitals over the internet and then it, it's all IOTified, right? So, the second sector which you guys all know about is the home automation space. Inside the home automation space, it's like connecting your TV, fridge, oven, coffee maker, your dustbin, your garbage collection, everything to the internet and making sure that everything, you know, is smart. So this is another use case where things are going to happen. Quite a lot of people know that in the home automation space, this is how it is today. So everybody tries to buy these smart stuff from the internet and try to, you know, make things IoTified. The another very famous thing, I think so people are hearing about hackathons around smart cities, right? Anybody here participating in hackathons? Yeah, few guys. And then you're doing on smart cities. Smart cities includes your street lamps, waste management, air quality, parking system, traffic monitor. So here, how many of you actually wait near a signal where the timer keeps going on, but there's no traffic in the signal at all? Right? This always happens quite a lot in our scenario. Making a traffic management system smart is understanding number of vehicles going through a lane at a given point of time and automatically adjusting the timer of your traffic signal. So that's what is your being smart consists of. A smart city, if you would name it, would have all these things. Smart street lamps. When there is no traffic, the light should be dimmed, saving power. We are running out of power big time. Things like these all contribute to making things smart. So that's why I said there's a difference between laziness and smartness, and we prefer laziness over smartness, obviously. So apart from these, there are so many other things that you can do with internet, right? From smart bed, fitness, health, pet care. So how many of you here have fishes at home, uh, aquarium or a fish tank? So how many of you at least attempted to build something which feeds your fish automatically? You guys are technology people. So anyway, these are the kind of things, whenever you're away from your home, you should actually open your phone, press a button, and there's some food which drops into the fish tank and the fish gets fed. That's the kind of thing we are talking about with smart technologies and smart things. So, Basically, how do we IoTify things? So this is a term I coined, but somebody used it before me, so that became somebody else's name. But anyway, so how do you IoTify things? What you actually do is that you take any device, add a sensor to that, and then you connect it to the internet. For example, we have about 1,100 seats in this room, and then somebody wants to know how many of these chairs are occupied. How do you make that IoTified so that somebody sitting in a remote location can tell how many seats are available for people to come in? That's a smart solution. You put a weight sensor underneath each of the chair, each of them talks to the internet, and now you know the complete map of the whole room where how many seats are left to be taken. Imagine the same solution going for a parking lot. All these are kind of internet of things related solutions with respect to IoT. Uh, uh, IoT. So what we guys do, the company I founded, co-founded is called as the IoT suitcase, okay? We are actually trying to solve three major problems in the industry right now. Okay, as you know, IoT is today and now. It's, it's happening right now. But if you try to implement any IoT solution, right, a typical IoT solution would consist of a hardware, a cloud, or a software from which you control the hardware, a mobile app, and all those things. Today, there are so many solutions which are available, but you get hardware only or software only kind of a thing. Second thing is that, as a person who would like to make this room smart, right, so how much effort and time you need to put in to develop something like this, right? The third thing is that we still do a lot of mundane things. Mundane things as in if you feel cold, you turn off the fan yourself. You go to the switch and turn it off. If it is too hot, you again turn it on. Instead, imagine wiring all these up in a, in a you know, fancy way or a smart way, and you can actually control each of these devices with one another based on the temperature of the room. This is what we are calling it as smart things. So what we have done is that we have built a unified platform a whole platform where you can start implementing Internet of Things solutions, right? So 
This is what we do. We provide a cloud, we provide a mobile app, we provide a dashboard, we provide a hardware, we provide a complete connected solution. That's what we guys do at the IoT Suitcase. We built a whole platform where you can focus on building something awesome and we'll take care of managing it for you. You have a million dollar idea, don't spend time doing hardware, programming, cloud, mobile app and all that stuff. We guys provide you everything out of the box. So that's what we are trying to do here. So these are some of the products that we are trying to launch. This is going to come out soon to the Indian market, probably in less than two months. So this device, what you're looking at, is called as an Echo Switch. So you have TVs, refrigerators, washing machines at your home. They are connected to your sockets. What we guys do is that instead of you directly connecting them to the sockets, you connect them to this, and this goes to the socket. Now your washing machine or TV or whatever you're connected to that becomes smart. Using your mobile app or a desktop or something, you can turn your devices on or off. So we are trying to pitch this into the Indian market and see. So what do you guys think about this product? It's good? Bad? It's nice? Thank you. So it's going to come out in two months, and then you guys can actually buy it and uh, see what you think about it. So this is purely a technology era we are trying to push in the Indian market and see how it goes. The second product we are trying to push soon after that is called as an iSense. iSense is basically a, it's like your paperweight that sits on your table, and then it understands your surroundings. It senses your surroundings, like understands the temperature, humidity, motion detection, number of people inside the room, light intensity, sound, air quality, and so on, and give these metrics to you. With this, you can see how the quality of your life is and so on. So we are trying to push this. Is, this is another product we are trying to push so you can understand the whole ecosystem of how this IoT actually works. So these are ready-made products that we are pushing into the market to, you know, for you guys to consume it. Apart from that, we also work on building so many other solutions for industrial areas as well as common home automations and so on. So that's, why, that's what we guys do. So this is us. We eat, we sleep, we IoT, we repeat. Okay, if you have any questions or anything, you can drop an uh, email there, and then we'll be more than happy to answer the questions. Hi, uh, great talk. Uh, you mentioned smart cities, right? Uh, how do you see in the Indian uh, ecosystem these sensors being integrated with the actual cities and doing things like you know, city surveillance or you know, finding where the garbage disposal uh, trucks have to go and f pick up garbage, and real use cases, right? The cities here are uh, facing extreme problems. You know, everything from flooding that we are seeing in Delhi and Bombay and Assam. Uh, so there's a real need for more intelligent solutions, even if they're not smart, just to fix the current set of problems, right? How do you uh, uh, solicit or gain the buy-in from the actual city administrators and the civic population to support, you know, rollout of uh, such solutions? It's a nice question, actually. So uh, just to give a quick, quick uh, pretext, right? there are two different things. One is called as connected solutions, and the other one is called as smart solutions. Right? Connected solutions are things which actually get connected to one another, but smart solutions are the ones which can make their own decisions. Right? For example, if the garbage is full, a sensor can notify you. But instead of just notifying you, if it can make a phone call to the authorities to come and pick up the garbage, that's called as a smart garbage collection. Whereas if it just notifies you and you can see what is the garbage level, that's just a connected solution. To answer your question, right, in the current market, what we have, technology is still very nascent in India. So most of these solutions, whatever you're looking at, needs huge amount of support from the government because all these are connected solutions and smart solutions, which government needs to have Wi-Fi's and networks and things provided so that they are really smart. Having said that, right, the technology has always been there since from the beginning to solve problems what we already have. Waste management is not at all a complicated solution. Putting a sensor to check how much is the waste and then calling your garbage collection is not a challenge at all. Having said that, right, it really will take time in India. You guys are the ones who are supposed to go ahead and implement these and bring it out to the market. I don't want to get there, but the idea is that in Hyderabad itself, there are so many organizations which work around the smart cities, right from Im implementing hackathons and uh, doing that, you know, taking the best solutions from a hackathon, you know, putting it to the government officials and taking it forward. But being in this industry for more than two years, I've seen at least six to eight amazing solutions done by college or tech people, which was never materialized so far. If they did, right, you wouldn't have so many problems as what you mentioned initially. So. That's what is my take. I don't want to go anti-political anyway, but sure. Any other questions, guys? Uh, good morning, sir. Can we apply this technology to the you know, uh, electrical smart power systems? 
Yeah, you can do that. So the Echo Switch product, what I just showed you, right? That's actually a retrofit solution to your electrical or electronic solutions. So the idea behind the product is that you actually connect this to your TV or your fridge or your refrigerator and see how much amount of power is being how much amount of power is being consumed by each of these devices, right? So now you can monitor. So we actually did an interesting experiment which with the same echo switch device so far. So what we have done is that we have connected the echo switch which I just showed you to the um, TV. We increased the brightness and saw that the power consumption was reduced, but whereas if I increase the contrast, the power consumption increased. So understanding patterns like this from IoT, making sense of that data in the electrical sector has always been there. So we have already been working on that. You know, the main problem of power system is a fault occurrence. I mean, as an electrical engineer, I know about the fault and all those things. So I didn't, I didn't. The main problem in the electrical power system is a fault occurrence. I mean, yep. Can uh, can we use this uh, technology to apply the uh, to you know detect the fault and all the uh, all those googling the fault or something? Uh, you can. We actually are doing one solution for uh, a, a remote client of ours for managing the grids. But to answer your question, I don't think so. Technology cannot do anything to save you know generate power as such. Is is that the question? I didn't quite no, get no, that. No, no, no. That's not the question. Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, you know, uh, like. Uh, uh, without any man uh, fault any detection fault detection in and and automatic uh, oh yeah yeah that's already been there with fuses and surges already right we don't need technology to do that actually no no no, no. actually in grids um, it's like uh, smart grids you know okay uh, we we uh, we, uh, we don't have to um, empower any manpower there okay uh, a computer itself do uh, uh, does the uh, uh, like anything everything and uh, like we want, uh, we want a small app to uh, apply that. We can control from our homes. Yep, you can do that. You can actually do that with technology. Yes. Morning, sir. Yeah. Yeah, we are using this IoT for all electronics, uh, automobiles, and all. Actually, I'm from civil background. So, how would we go for IoT uh, to that? Like. How we can connect civil and uh, IoT and all? Uh, civil, right? Yeah. OK. I need to think. It's a good question. I need to still think what you can do. When you say civil, right, the only thing that comes to mind is home automation only. I cannot see. I don't. Maybe I need to think through it to answer that question, because we don't do any solutions in the civil space, at least now. You're yeah, talking actually, purely everything from Everything is developing except civil. We are using the technology and all since the, like, we are using all techniques and all. Mm -hmm. We have to do something new in that. Too. Okay, so you're talking purely from a construction perspective. I'm really not that familiar with civil, uh, or like construction and all that. Uh, like, yeah, somewhat like home automation and all. Yeah, home automation is already there in the industry. So I don't think so. That really comes under civil as such. But civil, I've, when I look at it, I'm talking about you know um, understanding the strength of your basements and pillar strength and constructing things more in a technology fashion. So if you really to answer that question, right? Recently there was a uh, a thing which happened in Russia or Japan. I don't remember where they have used drones to actually construct a rope bridge. You know, about five or six or drones, and then they constructed the rope bridge with that. So each of the drones comes and collects it, and then there were a couple of other experiments done with drones also, where they built a whole house with, you know, using just this technology. I think so. There is scope for that, but I still need to think through it to come up with the proper answer. Good morning, sir. Yeah. Uh, myself, Sri Devi. I'm here to ask a question that uh, you you told about IoT. Then uh, I get a question that uh, will IoT affect environment? Uh, will uh, will there be any effect on the environment that you'll be using some some sort of plastics and all for that technique? So I just want to know. Do you have a Wi-Fi router at your home? Ah uh, yeah. Yeah, whatever that is going to cause the effect, the same thing is going to be caused by your Wi-Fi devices. The only thing is the intensity of your Wi-Fi signal or the connectivity, whatever you're doing, is going to increase. So there is going to be a lot of radiation to answer from a health-wise. OK. Then uh, the same cost will be there for the for these things also. I, I'm sorry, I'm not able to. Uh, I'm also asking in, uh, with respect to economical background. Economical, right? So how is it going to impact the economy? Yeah, and also environment. Environment-wise, I told you, right, it's, so how many mobiles are there, number of users here into one? 
So that many more connected devices would arrive for each and every person. Mm -hmm. So economic, uh, from the environment perspective, right, it's going to be more amount of signals, more amount of radiations, and that's going to happen. When it comes to numbers, right, you can just Google IoT and you'll see number which starts with 12 and like 30 zeros after that. That's the economic part of it. So by they are expecting about uh, $250 trillion to be there in the IoT industry by the end of 2020, and about more than, I think so, 5 billion devices, more than what we have right now in another four years. Only connected solutions, devices. Yep. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, can this platform be safe from hacking? Safe from? Hacking. <laughs> Uh, okay, to answer that question, right, we are going to launch a hackathon soon using the IoT suitcase where we have our own hardware, right? We'll give it to you and ask you to build solutions out of it, then you can try it out and let us know. As far as I know, to be the good guy, it's not. Good morning, sir. Uh, yep. My question is that, uh, uh, what is the approach? What is your approach? Will I be able to avail your service outside the country? It has nothing to do with the region. You mean connecting your devices outside the country or yeah, controlling them? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So the concept of Internet of Things is that. So in the current industry, right, the products, whatever you see, right, there are two types of solutions. One, you need to be within a certain geographic location to control it. Like once your home is automated, and once you leave the parking garage, you no longer have control to the things on your thing. The second set of smart solutions or connected solutions we are talking about, those actually are connected to your Wi-Fi, right? How your mobile is going to behave with your Wi-Fi router, the same way each of these devices are going to do with your Wi-Fi router. You can control anything from anywhere in the world. That is what we are trying to push. So, the second, second question is, uh, will you be provide the services outside the country? For example, if I'm Australia, will you be able to sign the contract with us if we go there? Yeah, we can. But the technology, what you have, uh, is there a based on Indian market or uh, Australia? Outside India? Uh, Wi-Fi connectivity solution is all over the world, so anywhere it should work fine. And uh, uh, will you maintain the transparency between us? For example, will you show the where are you investing uh, means, uh, your product, uh, your price of the product, and how much uh, profit do you get? Will you maintain the transparency between us? Or you just sign the contract and uh, give, you, give us the market price? Do you want to take our products and sell it in another country? Is that well, the question? nothing like that, but yeah. I'm just telling you that. No, I, I want to understand your requirement. Then only I can answer the question whether if it is, if I can share or not. So, so sir, for example, I will uh, give you a big contract. Mm -hmm. So will you be able to show the market price of a contract, uh, the products and the price? You can actually drop a note to that email. We'll discuss in depth. So if you're really having some contacts, we can actually talk further. And no, I just want that. Will you be able to maintain the transparency between us? Obviously, yes. Thank you, sir. Hello, sir. Yeah. Internet, thing, internet, of, internet of Things is all about internet, right? But in our country, internet connectivity is still not to that extent. So how do you think the uh, future of this uh, IoT will be in the Indian market? As a technologist, right, I can only hope that more people install Wi-Fi routers. I can't do anything more than that. I cannot, so uh, to be very honest with you, right, so we guys are working with one of the government officials to implement a smart street lamp solution in one of the places, right? There's a strip of 50 lights in a row, and we want to control each one of them individually. Now the problem over there is the connectivity like you rightly pointed out. So we don't get any support from the people who are working with us to enable Wi-Fi over that area. You either end up implementing a Wi-Fi strip or the more common alternative in today's generation in India is to use a GSM SIM module and transmit over the network with your network provider, which is not a cost-effective solution, but an alternate solution to that. What are your next future projects? Uh, we have quite a lot of them planned out, but first, right, see, as I told you, as people, you have already been seeing the industry, the market, and everything in the IoT area. It's still very, very nascent. Big, big companies have developed so many products and they have not yet launched anything. The only thing we know about is the talking fridge from Samsung and a couple of other things like that. We still want to, as I showed you, we showed you two products, right? The Echo Switch and the iSense. We first want to release those things into the market and see how the Indian crowd reacts to it. So there's a, so now once, to be very honest with you, right, from a technology perspective as an end user, right, you'll be very paranoid about what kind of data is being transmitted to which location, how the data is being used and things like that. So unless until our community gets comfortable with the thought of an IoT with connected devices and solutions, we guys really don't want to predict anything in the near future that's that's the idea can we develop it like we can it iot suits can read our minds 
<laughs> you can. Really, you can. You know these EEGs which you do at your doctors? They actually have something called as your alpha waves or beta waves and gamma waves and things like that. You can read that digitally and then try to do that. I think so. there's an interesting book called as uh, Mind Control with Audrino. You should check that book out. That actually talks about controlling devices with your mind. It's already there. <laughs>